And for any of you that had the beginnings of a small business this year, a little side hustle, a side gig, you had this 1099 come out of nowhere. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm now in this realm. I'm listening to these guys' podcast. I've got to be take more ownership of this small business opportunity. This is one of the best write-offs is auto. There is a lot of opportunity here, a lot of mining for gold going on. You've got three weeks left. It's a great time to do some of your planning for the upcoming year and harvest a write-off now. You could do this transaction with no money down and still harvest a write-off before year end. Welcome to the Main Street Business Podcast. This is Matt Sorensen joined by the illustrious Mark J. Kohler. We are excited to be here with you today. End of the year. Things are wrapping up. There's a lot of tax questions and considerations. Maybe it's a December to remember for you. Oh, yeah. That's, we, I love a December to remember. That's a good one. Well, at least for your tax return <laughs> and your small business planning, that's what we can help with. As for your family dynamics and the train wreck coming, that's up to you to... You that's know. another podcast. That's, uh, you know, <laughs> that's another therapy podcast you got to yeah, listen to. That's for to. sure. Don't come here for that. We're here for therapy on your tax and legal planning. So big topic today. It's a good one. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. A knee jerk reaction. I need a write off. I'm going to go buy a car or I need to get an electric vehicle or get an SUV or get a truck or all these things that we business owners think are going to help them on their tax return. And they might, and they yeah. could, but it and we do love it. Yep. <laughs> it just depends. And that's why we have a whole damn podcast to tell you when it matters and when it doesn't. And yeah. you might also be like, guys, I don't even know how to write off my auto anyways. I've been, I started a new business. I got a side hustle now. I've got a rental. I don't even know my options on writing this off. What do I need to do? Why is this valuable to me? We're just going to break it down, whether you're buying a new auto, you're using one in your business or your rental properties. We're just going to break it down. And I, you know what I did? I, I Googled to prepare for the podcast today. I Googled auto deduction strategies and um, the Mark J. Kohler article was number two. Oh, really? Number two. Was number one sponsored? Um, I don't remember what number one was, but it looked dumb. I was like, why would I click on that one? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Mark, Mark J. Kohler's got it. Well, uh, well, thank you, Matt. I appreciate you. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, and I do have a great article on this. I have kind of seven rules of thumb. We break this down. Let's make sure that's in the minutes. If I could tell my studio director here. there We do an article every January. It's at markjkohler.com in my blog section. Every January, I update it for the changes in the auto mileage limit and depreciation limits. It's all, it's constantly changing. Let me start with number one. I think this is an important point. Two things, if I may. Yeah, <laughs> number yeah, one yeah. and two. Number, number one, 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 A and B. Yeah, this is A and B. Okay. Once you choose a method for a vehicle, you're stuck with that method. That There is some really unique, rare instances where you can change it, but don't go there. All accountants tell their clients, and it's true, just once you choose a method for your car, you're stuck with it. Those two methods, this is my second point, A and B, are mileage or actual. That's it. So once you choose a method, you're stuck with it. And then number two, what is that method, mileage or actual? A lot of the talk today is gonna to be in the actual arena because mileage is pretty straightforward. Yeah, mileage is pretty straightforward and you're just tracking your business miles, okay? These are miles used on business, not commuting to and from your office for you business owners. That's commuting, that doesn't count. But you're traveling to a conference, you're going to meet a client somewhere, you're in real estate, you're driving to properties, you're going to your rental property. And this is all mileage that you're tracking. And this includes the IRS is like, let's just freaking simplify this. Don't track your repairs and your gas and you know your insurance and all the stuff involved with your car. Just track the miles for business. Business, and we're going to give you a certain cents per mile, which is what yeah. is it, 60, 65.5, 65.5. So if you got a thousand miles for business, that's a $655 deduction that's going on your tax return. It's actually pretty powerful. And so a lot of clients like mileage because it does give them pretty good bang for their buck. Yeah. And for any of you that had the beginnings of a small business this year, a little side hustle, a side gig, you had this 1099 come out of nowhere. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm now in this realm. I'm listening to these guys' podcast. I've got to be take more ownership of this small business opportunity, this is one of the best write-offs is auto. Now, you don't have to reimburse yourself out of the business. You don't have to have an LLC. You don't have to have a business bank account or a tax ID number even. If you got a 1099, that means you have a small business. Now, I'm talking about the 1099 for ordinary income. You're selling a product or service, something like that. So you got a 1099, let's look at auto. So you'd go back for the dur during the year and the IRS would love that you had kept a mileage log day by day. 99.9% .9 of people don't, but you've got to be honest about it and try to recreate the best mileage log you could of your mileage throughout the year. And you're going to give that to your accountant and they're going to book it. 
meaning they're going to take that mileage for business, not commuting, not personal, and multiply it by 65 and a half cents. Done. That's it. So just turn that in and you can have multiple cars. You could have, yeah. oh, my kid's car, my wife's car, my car, my husband's car. We all use it, these different cars for business. You just turn in the mileage for each car, done. But what if the business doesn't own the car? What if it's in my personal name or my oh, spouse's name? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The IRS doesn't care. They don't care if it's paid off. They don't care if there's a loan. They don't care who owns it. All you have to be able to prove is I was running errands for my business. I was meeting a customer, meeting a client, going to workshops, going to work sites, any of those things for business mileage, and you're good. But Matt, I can write off more because I put a sign about my business on the side of the car, don't oh, I? Oh, did you wrap that Lamborghini? I Yeah. And so every mile you drive is business. Yeah, I wrapped the Lamborghini, but not the Ferrari. I'm going to the grocery store for <laughs> eggs. Business, it's called marketing. <laughs> no, IRS has blown that one up, said, no, it's not. Nice try, genius. Um, yeah, so that is not going to count as mileage for, for business purposes. Mm -hmm. So don't think just throwing the wrap on. And they're less common right now, actually. You yeah. see those less and less. Yeah. And maybe this is unless why. You, unless you live in North Scottsdale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Lambos are a little, little, little over the top in, yeah, in yeah. North Scottsdale. <laughs> oh um, but yeah, so don't think about the wrapping. I mean, I guess if you're into that, but it's not going to give you an auto deduction. Yeah. Don't, don't think that's going to help you get an auto deduction. Yeah, now we're not talking about R-A-P-P-I-N-G. If you want to throw down a 90s video, uh, do a little video on walking on your car, dancing and rapping a song. You can do that. Yeah. But we're talking about W-R-A-P-P-I-N-G. Since it's Christmas time, rapping <laughs> is a technique of putting a design of your company name on the side of your car. That does not increase your tax write-off. You, you get to write off the cost of doing it, but it does not increase your business mileage. So in summary, everybody, and for 30 years, 90% of small business owners would do mileage. It was easy, it was simple. Yeah. It's, you know, this 40 to 65 cents a mile throughout the years, it was just the way to go. It was easy, it was simple. And all of you can do it right now. And once you choose mileage, you're stuck with it. But along comes the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act and Donald Trump yeah, and baby. even the Biden administration <laughs> with electric vehicles. And Donald Trump threw in a bunch of stuff with the electric vehicles. They revamped the entire auto deduction regime that was yeah. set up by Ronald Reagan. I mean, seriously, it was so anodated. And so this new ability to write off your car or SUV or truck or electric vehicle just went on steroids and it stimulated the economy. It was great for the auto industry. It was great for small business. And so now this actual deduction has come back with a vengeance. Yeah, and that's why we're talking about it at year end because a lot of people are like, well, I want to buy an auto and write the whole damn thing off or the vast majority of it in this year as a tax strategy to save me on taxes this year, right now in 2023. So typically when you buy equipment in your business and that's an auto is considered or a truck, depending on what you're doing, you have to write that off over time. You depreciate it. So it's like if you buy something for 50 grand, the IRS might say, well, you use that over five years. So we're gonna let you take $10,000 a year and different assets and equipment have different life cycles of how you write this off. And that's called depreciation. But when you're able to accelerate depreciation, and this is the auto deduction strategy now, this is what Mark's talking about, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. They said, yeah, that five-year window or 10 or seven, whatever the it might be for the auto, we're just gonna collapse it. We'll let you take 100% of it now. And I think it was 80%. Yeah, it was bonus depreciation up at 100% until at the end of 22. So this year it was 80%. Yeah, which is still good. So you're on, this is better and it's been besides last year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A couple years before. And for you accountants out there, and for those that know a little bit about this, there's a, a nuance called the 179 and bonus depreciation. And that's that ability to ramp up this write-off that Matt's talking about. And so uh, we've taught in our tax certification training to so many advisors that you actually go for the 179 first, then you throw on bonus. Because 179 cannot run you into a loss on your business, but bonus can. And so you want to take that 179 first, then grab bonus. So for any of you out there that are thinking of buying a vehicle before you're in, remember that's what we're coming to. <laughs> We're just giving you the history here. They're like, guys, give me the strategy. I'm yeah, going to go talk to my wife. I'm going to need a truck. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm shopping. Yeah, yeah. Give, give me, me my ticket. Give me the ammo. <laughs> give me the ammo. But Mark and Matt said, I'm going to save taxes on this. So it's like, I made money. Yeah, I know. I know. So CPA math, right? Uh, so, but I want everybody to know the concept. So when you're at a dinner party with your little reindeer glass full of eggnog talking with Uncle Eddie, you want to make sure you know and when someone asks you, what do you do with your vehicle? Oh, I do mileage. It works for me. Oh, I do actual. Now, here's one of the big rules. 
you cannot do actual unless the vehicle's used 50% or more in the business. Yeah. So, so mileage, again, sometimes is super easy for any of you that have a side gig or a side hustle because you have commuting miles, you have personal miles, and your business miles just don't kick it over 50% use. But for any of you that have that 50% or greater, now it gets tricky. And that's why I said in my article, I have seven rules of thumb. And now we can get into... When should I go actual? Is this the time of year to rush out and buy a car? Yeah. And it's always funny, Matt and I get these calls. I literally for years had one every New Year's Eve day. A client <laughs> would call me. The last one was from Hawaii. I remember it because they were on a different time zone. I'm like partying late at night. It's like nine o'clock, but in Hawaii, it's like five. It's like, we're at the dealership. I'm going to buy an F-350 or whatever. And I'm like, should I do it? I'm like, do you need a big truck? No. Well, then why are you doing it? Because it's a great write-off. Have you seen the gas mileage on that thing? <laughs> yeah. Well, dude. <laughs> so what we've said is don't let the tax tail wag the dog. Yeah. How do you, I mean, how many ways yeah. can we say that? Yeah. I just think, yeah. I mean, don't go throwing away money just to chase a tax deduction. But if you're like, hey, I'm going to be in the market anyways for a new auto truck, whatever it is yeah. in my business. And we're at year end. Well, and you've got a great 2023 tax return, a lot of income. We'll go buy it now instead of in January of 2024 and waiting another year to get that tax deduction. Yeah. Let's go grab it now. But we're not saying go out and buy these autos that you wouldn't otherwise buy because it's a tax deduction. You still give up money. Like that's the thing. It's not a tax credit. It's a deduction. Like you're still only getting a deduction that reduces your taxable income. You're not getting yep. a dollar for dollar yep. tax credit. Yep. So oh, we're going to so talk good. about tax credit by the way, for the EVs and electric vehicles, if you're purchasing one for personal or business, because there's a personal EV deduction and or tax credit, I should yep, say, yep. and a commercial one. But one thing I want to go back to, you said, this is really important. I want to make sure you guys get this. Uncle Eddie, <laughs> <laughs> in the example there, I think he probably did mileage on that RV because that thing was that thing was worth maybe five grand. And he <laughs> did drive it cross country. Oh my god! I gosh. mean, right. They went all the way from wherever the hell they were to Chicago yep. to visit the Griswolds. So I probably would have thrown mileage for him. Well, yeah, it's funny you go there with that joke because <laughs> that's the next topic. Okay, now I want to take a breath, everybody, because this is a lot. We're throwing a lot at you. So I'm gonna, I want to review where we're at. Number one, you want to make sure you choose the right method for your vehicle because you're stuck with it until you sell it. Number two, you want to realize that mileage could be a good option and maybe your only option. And then you want to say, okay, actual. And what am I doing with actual? Oh, I get to write off fuel, repairs, maintenance, and then this big depreciation kicker where I can write off this car, whether it's 20 grand or an SUV or truck that's 60 grand. Should I ramp that deduction up and just write off fuel or should I stick with mileage? And so that's where we're at now. And, and then the next point we made was make a smart one. Let's not throw good money at bad. Let's make sure we need this vehicle. It makes good economic sense. Okay, now on yeah. this mileage thing, yeah. this is one of my first rules, rules of thumb. Think about your business use. Are you going to put on a lot of miles mm -hmm. or not? Because if you say, let's just take an average vehicle at $40,000. Let's we'll say it's $40,000. New or used, loan or no loan, doesn't matter. It's $40,000. If you're going to put on 15,000 miles a year and you're going to crank on miles, wow. Okay, so that could be at least eight to $9,000 deduction. How many miles did you say? 15,000 a year. Oh, okay, yeah. So... Yeah, almost 10 grand. Almost 10 grand in write-offs. Now, if you were to go with the actual deduction, you might get a $19,000 write-off in year one. But that was in 2022. I'm looking at some of the numbers because you have this bonus, la, 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 la. So you might get a fifteen dollars to $20,000 write-off in that first year. And you think, what's more? $15,000, which less, 10,000. I better go actual. Well, then the next year you put on 15,000 miles and your gas receipts are three grand and mileage would have been 15 you know, and 15,000 miles or 10 grand. Oh, so over a three year period, if I'm gonna put on a lot of miles and I'm a realtor, I'm a broker, I'm a contractor, holy crap, why front load all those write-offs yeah. when over three years I could get three times the amount? So you can't get greedy. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's why I said Uncle Eddie, since that RV was a beater, not very, the price point was low. You're mm -hmm. only getting this depreciation, this 179 on the value of what you pay for the vehicle. Whether you bought it in cash or you got a loan, it doesn't matter, but it's what the, the purchase price of the vehicle was. But for mileage, it just matters the miles. They don't care if you're rolling around in a $100,000 vehicle or a $5,000 mm -hmm. POS. And so if you drop 5,000 bucks on a beater truck and you're driving 10,000 miles a year, I'm telling you, mileage is going to pay off every time yeah, and over I've, actual. 
But I, on the other hand, if you got a really expensive car or auto in your business and you're driving a little miles, then the mileage is not going to be good for you and the actual is going to be better. I love it. Yeah, I, I love it. And I'm just going to say it another way. I have a little table that I've done in presentations where the value is up and mileage is down, you go actual. When value is down and mileage is up, you go mileage. Now that's just, again, a yeah. general rule of thumb. And that gets the conversation yeah. going. But this is goes back to what you said at the very beginning. You got to pick that at the beginning. Yeah. Because you're stuck whether you go that. So for many of you that may think, I'm going to buy a new auto end of year right now, and I'm going to go actual, but... It's not like you're gonna be able to jump back to mileage in your two or three. You're mm -hmm. on actual until you yeah. sell that thing. Which brings up the next consideration, which is in my rules of thumb. What is your gas oh, yeah. mileage? Miles per gallon. Miles per gallon, MPG. So let's say you you went with a pretty, maybe a hybrid, and you're getting 45 miles to the gallon. I'll even give you 40. Okay, so 40 miles to the gallon. Now everybody, this is important. 40 miles to the gallon, a gallon of gas is 329. So I can go 40 miles with one gallon of gas. Well, what's my write-off for that gallon of gas? That 40 miles times 0. 0.655. 065. That's $26. 06. Yeah, yeah. So I got a $26 write-off, even though gas cost me $3.29. Yeah. So now all of a sudden you're like, holy crap, I put on 10,000 miles. We're back to this. Yeah. $6,500 write-off, but 10,000 miles divided by 40 miles per gallon times $3.29, that's only an $822 gas deduction. So I'm looking at 1,000 versus six or 7,000. Yeah. Oh, so again, yeah. your gas mileage could really help you. So if you're putting on a lot, you've got a great MPG and you're putting on a lot of miles, I don't care if it's a freaking uh, Tesla or something. I mean, you may be like, wow, I'm going to go with mileage because yeah. I it's the differential is so, so yeah. strong. Yeah. So bottom line, if you drive a lot of miles, <laughs> particularly in a highly efficient vehicle, yes, particularly in that scenario, then that's the, I don't want to say sweet spot because we do use that quite a bit, Yeah. but that's the money spot yeah. <laughs> for <our> mileage pays. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's freaking awesome. We, finding the sweet spot can be a real challenge. Here's the thing too, let's go the other way. Let's say you're going to go out and get a truck. You've got, uh, you're doing a rehab business, a rental property business, and you only pick up and drive the truck at the end of the day, you know, or on the weekends. And you've got your commuter car for your day job. And yeah. now you got this truck. So, oh, you're, it's 70. Like this. Yeah, you're 75% business use. You buy it used, you get a good deal, and you're not putting on a lot of miles. You're going around town, checking on your rentals, doing a little rehab, and you're getting 10 miles to the gallon. All right, now we're talking, because 10 miles to the gallon, all right, we could go back through the math, but you get the point. I'm gonna get a much bigger gas deduction versus mileage deduction, and then, hmm, I could ramp up all those write-offs up front and get a big write-off here at the year end. Yeah. And you don't even have to, to put any money down. You could go out and buy a car with a truck with no money down before year end and get the write off, even though you've driven it 100 miles. Yeah. And a lot of people get confused by that. It's like, no, just buy the truck, get the loan. It's fine. Like, it, you still own this and get to take this depreciation write off. But also, like Mark's talking about, you now if you're going actual, though, you're also adding on other costs to the vehicle, not just the the cost to purchase and own, and own the vehicle, but you've got the gas, the insurance. Mm -hmm. We're also gonna write off the interest on the loan, right? Yeah. Actually, we're gonna write off the interest on the loan whether we're yeah. doing mileage or auto. That's yeah. another good point. For any of you doing mileage, you still get interest on the loan as a deduction yeah. in addition to the mileage reimbursement. A lot of people miss that one. Yeah. But so there's a lot of other expenses that you still are gonna add on though to actual in particular because you're gonna get the maintenance and repairs, the gas, the insurance. That to be, you got to track that. I know it can be a pain, but guys, tracking this, it's a deduction. It's yeah. going to add on to this deductible amount you're going to take. And this for is actual. where I love that used truck. For any of you out there with that side hustle, doing a little real estate or a side gig, a handyman service, landscaping, all that janitorial, all that. It's just that truck is cool because you throw on new tires right off. You go, you know, yeah. you've got to repair right off and you're getting all the fuels are right off your gas mileage sucks and you got the right off up front so it makes sense you got to look at the avatar what type of vehicle am i looking for here okay now before we go to electric can i throw in another variable yes i love that you brought up the rv this, the <laughs> rv plays into this we have a lot of clients that have an rv that's been sitting on the side of the house doing nothing 
And now they're like, I'm going to pop it into Waverly. And I'm going to start renting out, out the RV on the weekends when I'm not using it, create a little cash flow. Well, people, if you make that available 365 a year and then you just use it when someone else doesn't book it, that makes it a 100% business vehicle. Now I can write off your RV, which is not the fair market value today. It's your basis. So we can say, well, it's the lesser of fair market value or basis, but I can go in there and take a big write off for that RV that's been sitting there because you just started a business with that RV. Yeah. And you can go back to mileage or actual, but with an RV, I'm telling you, you're going actual. Um, Turo, another yeah. big one. Yeah. Uh, you picking up a vehicle and throwing it in the Turo program, you could go mileage or actual. So there's so many new businesses that involve the auto deduction too. Yeah, and I like, just for any of you nerds out there that, or sorry, new nerds, Mark <laughs> Mark's like king of the nerds now, the Main Street Tax <laughs> Pros, but so he says basis, remember that's like basis meaning when he said the lesser of, fair market value or basis, basis meaning your cost to purchase the RV plus any improvements yeah. or anything you put into it to fix it up maybe or something like that. So that that would be the, what basis means. Yeah, Just, I'm, and I'm gonna throw this out. We're bringing this up in our tax pro training this next week is a lot of clients looking for that last minute tax deduction. They could go out and buy an RV for 50 grand. I mean, a decent RV is gonna run you at least 50, you know, a, a decent one. And you go do your projections on Waverly. And if you haven't gotten familiar with Waverly, it's like Airbnb for RVs. Yeah. Go try to rent an RV this weekend. Go try, try and rent one in your local area this weekend. And what does it cost you? How available are they? What are your options? Oh, there's Sprinter vans. There's Class A, Class B, Class C, fifth wheels, pop-ups. They're all there on, on Waverly. So then find out what RV could work for me. Oh, now you've got an RV that you can use when it's not being rented. It can cash flow, and you just wrote off fifty thousand dollars that can be used against your W two, because that's a Schedule C business. You're renting personal property; it's going to go on a Schedule C. We might ultimately throw it in an S corp down the road, but this is a great way to go for a year in tax tip. Because you're not just buying a car or a truck for your business that you need anyway. Now you're buying a vehicle that's creating cash flow. Yeah, much much smarter move. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Electric? I guess we go to the electric now. Um, get to my article. Look at the seven rules of thumb when you start to look at this relationship between mileage and actual, the write-offs. Um, there's some tables in there that really tell you what the write-off you could expect. Meet with your tax advisor in the next two weeks. Run the numbers. Is it going to help you in your business or not? If your business is already at a loss, chasing this is not going to be a good deal. You're making yeah. 50, 100, 150 grand. You're like, hey, I need a new vehicle anyway, which I liked what you said, Matt. Look at yeah. the next three months. And dealerships right now are throwing out a lot of incentives before yeah. you're in. They yeah. want to get cars off that lot. And you might yeah. even be able to get a 2024 model yeah. at your end. Well, let's talk about electric vehicles. Yeah. Those are obviously getting popular on the road today, whether it's a Tesla or any other. You've uh, done a lot of research on this too. I've done a lot of research on it. My wife has a Tesla. I've been looking at a new car for myself. Mm -hmm. I've been deciding whether I want to go electric or not. Boogie woogie. I think Matt's so, going with the Leaf. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I put myself as a Nissan Leaf driver. I think that was Mark Kohler that owned the Nissan Leaf. This is Mark when he lived in California. He's like, dude, I got to get the HOV lane. It's crazy out here. That was Mark's ticket to the HOV lane. What did you get? That that charge would get you like 20 miles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I can go to the next exit. Charging. <laughs> go to the next exit. Charging. Now, this was back in the early days of electric. Yeah, this okay. was a little early electric. They've, they've come a long way. They had a little so. gerbil. I open up the trunk. There's little gerbils on a wheel. Yeah. You know, just like <laughs> trying to charge the engine. It was, it was a nice thing. Yeah. 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 It, that didn't actually have like the punch that the Teslas have or some of these EVs yeah. now that are like, you hit that gas and it's yeah. like, hold on for dear life. Yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like if you're at the tilt a whirl. You yeah, know, my the wife has the <laughs> Tesla Model X and you hit that thing, it is like, hold on. Like, if I'm not, I've like hit it and like people in the car are like, holy, dude, you gotta give us warning when you do that. I'm like, hey, you know. <laughs> Oh smoke my them. gosh. Smoke them if you got them, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Ride with the top down if you got a convertible. <laughs> All right, baby. Okay, well, let's get into the EVs because these are certainly popular right now and there's some changes going on. There's actually news right now in the last week about the Tesla Model 3. This is like the mm. second most popular EV on the road. It's the affordable Tesla, $7,500 tax credit. There's a $7,500, that's the maximum tax credit you can get for buying an EV. Now, this can be for personal or business use. This doesn't even have to be used in your business. There is 
is a EV credit, $7,500 tax credit, not deduction. It's going to reduce your federal income dollar for dollar up to 7,500 bucks to purchase a qualifying EV. We're going to talk about how that works. Yeah, there's some catches. We'll come yeah, to that. We'll hit that. Sounds so good right now. All right. All right. Hang with me. All we got their right. attention. Because it works yeah. for a lot of people though. still. Right now, the Tesla Model 3, the Biden administration has said, Nope, doesn't get the seventy five hundred dollar deduction anymore. We're cutting that to three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. But they love Elon. They're in oh, Elon. Oh, the Biden administration loves Elon. Oh yeah, they love Elon. This is kind of they're like, eh, let's stick it to Elon here. So here's what's going on because the Biden administration is like this economic war with China right now, right? And they're they got all these competing priorities. They love saving the environment, and electric vehicles, so they say. But they're also in this economic war with China, and so they're saying, hey, if we're going to give you a federal tax credit on an EV, we're not going to let it have minerals or components coming out of China. Well, just spoiler alert, a lot of electric components are coming out of China yeah. for most EV vehicles. And so Tesla's like, we can't build electric vehicles fast enough to meet our demand without sourcing some of our stuff out of China. The Biden administration said, great for you, but we're going to cut the EV credit, the yeah. 7,500 down to a max of 3,750 for the Tesla Model 3 because it doesn't, it because of this number amount of components coming out of China. Yeah. So now you want to go to fueleconomy.gov. That is the number one site that'll list what cars qualify and how much for the EV credit. It's a, it's a moving target even throughout the year because of this sourcing issue of where they get in their components for is this full tax credit partial or no tax credit at all is it an ev like let's say it's the tesla model s or something or that's like well that's too expensive they don't give you a tax credit for that so there's a little nuance to that make sure you know which ones qualify don't just think any ev is going to qualify yeah and the number of vehicles sold of that make and model will also affect the well, tax that's changed, credit no for this year though oh they really? changed that yeah for this year to okay. say that was the old rule because that you know there's like this moving target where it's like oh that this model qualifies well not anymore they've already sold this many models so it doesn't qualify so in 2023 they've killed that so oh, that's for, right that's right yeah they got that. rid of that there's so many moving parts yeah. to this and they but there was a catch though when they got rid of that Oh, and here's Remember the, the catch. catch. Yep, the catch is if you make too much money, yeah, you exactly. don't get the credit. So instead of penalizing the number of cars sold, exactly. they penalize the people buying them. Yes, this is again, there'll be a Biden tax move. I hate to say it. I mean, don't make me the partisan, but they're like, well, why don't, Why are we going to cap the amount of EVs? Let's cap the high income earners. Yeah. So if you make 300000 or more married, filing, joint, or 150000 or more single, you do not qualify for this tax credit for the EV purchase. And that's for personal use we've got yes, a loophole here yes, for you we'll come to the yeah, loophole for yeah. commercial use because there's a commercial ev credit for business owners without yeah. an income restriction but if you're just buying it for personal remember it's the max 7500 dollars tax credit this is for new if it's a used the max credit is four grand so you can still get used and actually the income limits go down even more so you i think it's like it was in half actually 150 married filing joints 75,000 single so but that's if you're buying a used ev but that's still cool there's a tax credit up to four grand it's better than nothing i'm no. just saying this is these are these this is real money here they're throwing yeah. at this that's a benefit and so if you're like and you know even these electric vehicles are the gas mileage benefits and you know saving the environment whatever is important to you i mean then they've come a long way right now so this is i think a still really cool incentive make sure you're picking this up and know about it if you're out in the electric vehicle market yeah. and I, i'm still surprised the credits around it all because i tesla's like all right they don't get the credit we're still selling out. There's a wait yeah, list. So yeah. whatever. I'm still in line for my Tesla Cybertruck. Yes. And uh, I don't care if I get a credit or not. It's just kick ass. I right. Can't, yeah, I, exactly. I so, but uh, it's the there. Cool, yeah. If that tax credit is hanging there, let's grab it. Make sure you know about it so it's on your damn return. Uh, I know. I want the cool electric motorcycle that goes in the back of the Tesla truck. When oh. you get to their, the page, it is so cool mm -hmm. looking. It's like futuristic little Tom Cruise action. Nice. Pop okay. out of the cyber truck. Is that just like an accessory. Add the motorcycle. Yes, for and there's a camper section. You can add wow. a trailer. It's all. Dude, it's pretty cool. All right. It's pretty. It's okay. pretty cool. I got to find a business use for that. Um, which brings us to that. So, yeah. If you're like, I make too much money. I want this tax credit and it does start to phase out. It's just yeah. not like a hard stop. So you start phasing out when you get close to those thresholds. Yeah. So the business owners. Yeah. Is, do they have a problem? Yeah. So let's say you make over these this three hundred grand married filing joint, hundred fifty thousand single. But you're like, guys, I'm going to use this electric in my business, and there are some electric trucks, and there's you know our larger vehicles too. But what what in the they created a commercial electric vehicle credit that business owners can take advantage of. So again, this is kind of going back to this actual use this majority of the use fifty percent or more for business. Now, if this is a auto under fourteen thousand pounds, the maximum credit is seventy five hundred dollars. But if it's over fourteen thousand pounds, I don't know what types of vehicles these are. 
their maximum credit is forty thousand dollars. Wow. Okay, this is again a tax credit. Yeah. Well, there's these new diesel trucks and delivery trucks. Yes. And, and you know, there's buses. There's all sorts of things that are electric now. And so, is there electric RVs building- yet? Electric what? RVs? I haven't seen one yet. I'm embarrassed. Okay. I, there probably is. Yeah, yeah. And I'm embarrassed to say. Well, there's got to probably be a Sprinter electric. Yeah, for you, sure. Uh, Class yeah. B, I bet. Yeah. So that. don't. Or so here. if you're going the electric route, the bottom line is there is this commercial credit. Look into it. Make sure, again, you're getting the autos that qualify this. The best way to look, again, the best site, fueleconomy.gov. I'm just going to make sure I got it right now. Uh, but that'll give you the list of the current qualifying vehicles. Go fueleconomy.gov. Which one do you like best on there? Are you going uh, Tesla? Let's, we've got the list here. I like the Chrysler Pacifica. Great oh, really? little minivan, you know, oh, yeah. vibe. I think it's a mini. You I don't know. Throw some car seats in. You for could good do the Lincoln Aviators qualifying for the seventy-five hundred dollars tax credit. The Nissan Leaf's only thirty-seven fifty-two, oh. three thousand seven hundred fifty. That one's yours. So, so you, you, <laughs> well, thanks. You owned it literally. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to own it, but yeah, then but, I got rid of it. And, you know, and so, but even too. like the Model X long range is in here, which is surprising. The Y, the Model Y for Tesla is the most popular EV out there. I was surprised to see that. The Volkswagen IDs, the BMW X5, Drive 50E. I mean, the, there's a Cadillac qualifying, Chevy Silverado truck, down to Chevy Bolt. These are all, I mean, these are $75 tax credits. Excellent list here to just go well, and I digest. I think Tesla's what nailed it, is they just make electric cars look cool. It's like yeah. the, the Chevy comes out with an electric vehicle and you're like, I don't want to drive that. Yeah. <laughs> like, can, why couldn't have you put that in a body style that like- Exactly, like a normal know, car. That doesn't look like my grandma's driving yeah. it. Yeah. You know, holy crap. I don't know. Yeah, they're making cars that like for the Jetsons rather than real life. It's like, what the hell? This looks ridiculous. It's crazy. All right. Well, everybody, hopefully if you found a golden nugget in this somewhere, because there is a lot of opportunity here, a lot of mining for gold going on. You've got three weeks left. It's a great time to do some of your planning for the upcoming year and harvest a write-off now. So if you're one of those 50 million Americans that have a side hustle, side gig, or a small business with or without employees, this is an opportunity for planning. And again, it's you could do this transaction with no money down and still harvest a write-off before year end and then create some efficiency. Make, be economical. Don't chase a deduction. Yeah. that doesn't make good economic sense. Yeah, but if you do need an auto, why not get it now before your end? Yeah, put a little bow on it. A little it. sweetener to get you over the edge. Remember, these tax incentives are real and they can really help on your tax return, help you save money and keep more of that hard-earned dollars you're doing because you're out there working so hard trying to build wealth, you know, employ people, provide a service or goods to your customers. Let's just give a little tax deduction. I just make a little sweetener for you. I... Love it. I love it. Well, thanks everybody for listening. Please share this with any friends of yours that have a small business or are in the market for a vehicle. We appreciate the five-star reviews, the shares on your social media. There's not many podcasts out there at all that approach this topic in a fun way, breaking it down in a simple format. We get so many great comments and reviews. So we'll make you look good. We won't let you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. please share. Yeah, get we'll, this to your car salesman too. I think that could be our great, they could be our, our sales people. They yeah. should be dropping this podcast to people that come in that are looking at a truck. You own a business? Have you listened to the Make Sure yeah. Business podcast article? I was in a Chevy commercial about yeah. 10 years ago. That's right, you were. Yeah. I, General Motors, Chevy yeah, or whatever. Yeah, they, they called me up and said, we need you to Do talk about- Do we have the clip of that? We've got to pull that out. Yeah, it's Is Mark Kohler doing a video for, <laughs> it was like, I thought it was like, was it Chevy or General Motors, like yeah. fleet vehicles, sir, yeah. like division. It's got Mark Kohler on there doing a little tax incentive <laughs> on why you should buy it. It's pretty cool. It, it was pretty fun. You'd see it at some truck stops here and there. And uh, Yeah, where did so that play? Did they play I, on the Super I got a, Bowl? Was that their Super Bowl ad? Yeah, I got some. No, it was. Yeah, but it was year end. Yeah, yeah I got some good, you know, you know, some pancakes, eggs, and bacon, Grand Slams, you know, at some of the truck stops. You guys oh, okay. Like, yeah, they're like, oh, the guy from the, yeah, yeah, the, you guy know, from the GM paid commercials. Off, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got a breakfast for you yeah. out of that. Well, anyway, thanks, everybody. Have a great holiday season, and we'll see you next week with another year end tip and breaking it down.